It's the battle of the sexes on the next win, lose, or draw from Walt Disney World. Here we go! Clifton Davis and Family Ties' Mark Price are getting pumped. You saw my 17 hairs on my chest. Oh, yeah. And Marie Johnson and Sally Struthers start a war of words. Hold it down. Hold it down. But the men draw first blood. Speak softly and carry a big stick. So come on and take the plunge. What's that fun or what? They're coming at you from Walt Disney World on the next win, lose, or draw. Win, lose, or draw tomorrow on WTAE-TV. From Channel 4, WTAE-TV in Pittsburgh, this is Action News. Tonight, Hurricane Gilbert is moving into the Gulf of Mexico after pounding the Yucatan Peninsula. Winds which reached 175 miles per hour earlier this evening dropped to 125 miles per hour as the storms move over land. The hurricane is now centered about 600 miles southeast of Brownsville, Texas. Good evening, everybody. They're preparing for the worst on the Texas Gulf Coast in the vicinity of Galveston tonight, and the National Weather Service has issued a hurricane watch for the area. And further south, Hurricane Gilbert pounded the Yucatan Peninsula with winds that gusted to 200 miles per hour. The Yucatan Peninsula is a popular vacation spot for Americans. And as the storm hit, normal communication with Cancun and other resorts was cut. The American consul, Brian Salter, a former football player for Pitt, says Americans are leaving fast. All of the people living in the hotel zone in Cancun were evacuated last night to uh, evacuation centers and other hotels in the city, which is about three to four miles away from the beach area. 20,000 Americans were still reported in the area this afternoon, and there were no reports of casualties. The force of the storm could certainly be measured in Jamaica, where 20% of the homes on the island were destroyed and damage was reported in the hundreds of millions of dollars. The country's two cash exports, bananas and poultry, are total losses. Even though Pittsburgh is far removed from Gilbert, there is a great deal of concern over the storm in our area. Pittsburghers with relatives in the storm's path or with family members vacationing in the area have spent much of the past few days nervously waiting for a phone call or a weather update. Dave Eckert is standing by in the newsroom with more. Dave? Well, Sally, Hurricane Gilbert might be thousands of miles away, but its impact is definitely being felt in the Pittsburgh area, ruining plans, worrying family and friends, and generally causing headaches for thousands. We have all watched as Gilbert cut its destructive path through the Caribbean over the past few days. A difficult sight for anyone to view, but especially for those with a connection. Uh, once the lines are restored, we should be able to get right through. People like travel agent Cheryl Foley. She has a group of eight from the Beaver Valley vacationing on Grand Cayman Island. Eight clients and friends Foley only discovered tonight had avoided the storm. And I've helped to plan a honeymoon or I've ha helped to plan their vacation, you know, and this is all part of that help, you know, rain or shine. <laughs> These were the places we were supposed to go to. Then there are people like Diane Shiraki, all set to go to the Caribbean, only to have their plans dashed. In this case, a second honeymoon down the drain. It started out with all good plans and, and you know, romantic. And now, like I said, it's just, it's just like a nightmare. And the nightmare continues for many others, still waiting to hear from family and friends or waiting to see where Gilbert decides to turn next. Now, here are a couple of numbers that just might help if you're among that group. The U.S. State Department can provide some assistance if you're having trouble getting through to a particular area. That number is area code 202-647-4000. You can also get an update on Gilbert's progress by calling 900-410-NOAA. I also called out to the Hurricane Information Center this evening and also out to Greater Pitt. Now, the airlines tell me right now that there are no flights canceled. However, if you are traveling south, the airlines suggest call before heading out to the airport because things can change very, very quickly. Meantime, we all continue to watch, wait, and listen. Sally? Okay, thanks, Dave. We will do that. And NASA is delaying making a decision on the space shuttle launch because of Hurricane Gilbert. The shuttle is supposed to go up in the last week of September, but the exact day hasn't been named, and it won't be until Gilbert passes. North Hills communities seem to be sitting on a radon hotspot. In recent days, newspapers and broadcast news programs have been reporting on Monday's release by the federal government of the National Health Alert on the dangers of radon gas and what that danger can be. 
Radon tests in seven states show that odorless household radon gas created by the decay of underground uranium was at unacceptably high levels in one out of every three homes. Now, early in 1987, an Action News report on the dangers of radon in 7,000 area families tested radon gas in their home, and it was found in their homes during that project. Those results were now confirmed by this week's government report. But what also showed up in this report on Action News is tests in the North Hills is a pocket of radon activity. Yvonne Zanos has the untold story in tonight's Target 4 report. Yvonne? That's right, Don. According to our radon testing, if you live in one of seven North Hills zip codes, you have nearly twice the chance of living with high levels of deadly radon gas as do people in the rest of Allegheny County. That risk is also twice the national average. The figures speak for themselves. In January of 1987, 7,000 families in the Pittsburgh area tested their homes for radon. 1,061 of those families lived in seven North Hills zip code areas. Test results show that many of those North Hills families were living with high levels of radon. Families in McKnight, Swickley, Ingemar, Wexford, Gibsonia, Wildwood, and Allison Park. 59% of those homes had radon levels in their basements at or above the government safety level. That's twice the estimated national average. In terms of health, that's equal to smoking at least a half a pack of cigarettes a day. And in 16% of the homes tested, radon levels equaled the lung cancer risk of smoking at least two packs of cigarettes a day. Even government experts experts were surprised. In some areas around Pittsburgh, the, uh, the levels are not dissimilar from what we're finding in the Redding Prong area. That Redding Prong is an area in eastern Pennsylvania infamous for its high radon levels. This North Hills resident found out a year and a half ago that her family is living with radon levels in the basement over four times the government safety level. It's been on my mind ever since. I Debbie is taking action to get the radon out of her home, an action this radon removal contractor says many in the North Hills are taking. He says this is where he does most of his business. That's right, from the North Park um, and around the surrounding areas, that's the worst. That's news many North Hills residents are learning for themselves as those test results return. Now, of course, the EPA is urging North Hills residents and people in all communities to test the radon levels in their homes. You can get a radon test kit starting at about $12, and you can find out more about those tests and about radon by calling the state's radon hotline at 1-800-23-RADON. Okay, thank you very much, Yvonne. Just a Thanks, shot. Yvonne. The Caligiri name could be returning to Pittsburgh politics. Jeannie Caligiri, wife of the late mayor, says she is thinking about running for a city council seat next year. In the past several weeks, there have been stories circulating on Grand Street that a number of city Democratic leaders and corporate officials have been talking to Mrs. Caligiri about running. Joining us from the newsroom is WTAE-TV political analyst Mossy Murphy. Mossy, will Mrs. Caligiri run? Yeah, I, I am fairly convinced that Jean Caligiri will run for city council if, in fact, the the matter is based on whether or not Mayor Masloff will decide to run for re-election and then lead the seat open between she and Michael Coyne, I would think she'll run. She's been encouraged by an awful lot of people to do that. Mossy, a lot of people probably have considered this, uh, knowing her involvement with her husband's politics, but uh, why do you think she's doing it? I think that uh, Jean Caligiri probably would like to see a lot of the agenda items on Dick's agenda finished in the city. I think that she enjoyed being the wife of the mayor. I think she loves the city of Pittsburgh. I think she's a very active person and she's one of the very few women in politics that was the wife of a political figure that seemed to really enjoy it. I think she really truly enjoyed being wife of the mayor and was very much a part of Dick's life. All right. Thank you very much, Mossy Murphy, our political analyst. The polls continue to reflect the seesaw aspect of this year's presidential race. An ABC News Washington Post poll released tonight shows Democrat Michael Dukakis with 48 percent and Republican George Bush with 45 percent. But the margin of error is plus or minus 3.5 percent, which could mean the two candidates are in a virtual dead heat. Earlier this week, other national polls showed Bush opening up an eight-point lead over Dukakis. And as the presidential campaign moves into high gear, just what are the issues that will fuel it? We asked 1,130 tri-state residents who intend to vote in the election what they feel those issues are. 31% of those polls said the economy was the most pressing issue. 20% felt national defense and foreign affairs were the most important. 13% were most concerned about health care. 
12% were worried about the elderly. On the other hand, 10% felt issues concerning our youth were most important. Finally, 9% say the environment is the most critical issue. Three hijackers and one hostage are dead tonight after a bus hijacking ended in a gunfight with South African police today. Three hijackers took over the bus in the Kingdom of Lesotho, which is within South Africa. They held 71 Catholic pilgrims who were going there for a papal visit today. The hostages included nuns and school children. South African police say they had to fire on the bus when the hijackers tried to drive it through the gates of the British High Commission while shooting at police. The three hijackers and a young hostage were killed. Eleven other hostages were wounded. Meanwhile, Pope John Paul II was making an unscheduled stop in South Africa today. He was trying to avoid South Africa because of its apartheid policies, but his plane was forced to land there because of bad weather in Lesotho. He was briefed on the hostage situation there and left for Lesotho by car. He arrived for his visit eight hours late, just as the hostage crisis was coming to an end. The bishop of Pittsburgh's Roman Catholic Diocese has come out in opposition to a proposed gay rights bill now before city council. Bishop Donald Worrell, in a three-page letter to all priests, called the legislation flawed because it failed to distinguish between homosexual activity and homosexual orientation. He is saying that we cannot allow the homosexual lifestyle to be approved by society through legislation. Now, gay rights organizations in Pittsburgh did not expect the bishop to endorse or support that bill before council, and one went so far as to say the bishop has his facts wrong. Well, I think the bishop hasn't done his homework. Uh, in fact, uh, the Human Relations Commission ordinance uh, exempts religions uh, in their sacred function from abiding by the ordinance. City Council will hold a public hearing on the gay rights legislation September 22nd. Televangelist Jim Baker was in court today, testifying in a lawsuit brought against him by the current PTL leaders. They say the Bakers owe PTL $53 million. Today in a South Carolina courtroom, Jim Baker testified that he had no idea how much his top aides were paid or how his own salary was set. And bad news for defrock televangelist Jimmy Swaggart from the TV rating service Arbitron. They say Swaggart's show has lost half its viewers since the Assemblies of God Church stripped him of his credentials. Swaggart used to be the most watched televangelist in the country. Now he's dropped to third. How do hurricane winds feel? We'll try to show you coming up next on Action News. And here's Joe DiNardo with tomorrow's Wake Up Forecast. Not too bad tomorrow morning. Great weather here in the district. At Wake Up tomorrow morning, looking outside, you'll see sunny skies. It'll be cool, a temperature of 47 degrees. And that complete forecast coming up on Action News. It's time. Come drive a Mazda. It's year-end clearance time. Time to get the deal of the year on a new Mazda. And factory-to-dealer cash incentives can add hundreds to your savings on a Mazda truck. It's time. Time to clear out all the 88s. Mazda's year-end clearance time. Come drive a Mazda. Get a great Mazda deal in Pittsburgh, Butler, Washington, Wexford, and Irwin. I'm 5'3". I never eat spaghetti on a first date. When I see something I love, I buy it on the spot. I'm a J. I was born in June. I think Albert Einstein was really cute. Some things in life I just do for myself. I'm an L. Express yourself with initial impression chains and bracelets. Real gold jewelry that tells the world exactly who you are. I'm 26. I'm not a vegetarian. And with a name like Hortons Louise, I'm glad just to be an H. Initial impression. Available at Kaufman's. In the Pennsylvania Lottery, the daily number is 456. The big four is 0882. In the Super 7 game, the numbers are 1, 10, 12, 15, 28, 34, 37, 42, 45, 57, and 61. In the Ohio Lottery, the daily number is 604. The pick four, five, six, nine, one. The Super Lotto, nine, 16, 23, 26, 39, and 43. And the kicker, four, zero, zero, four, seven, eight.
ago, this young woman became an owner of a major U.S. corporation. And she can't wait to get to work. Okay, you're all set with the Cadillac. Avis Incorporated is the only major rent-a-car company owned by its corporate employees. Cadillac, 45 bucks a day? How'd you swing that? I know the owner. Get fast service and a Cadillac for $45 a day. Avis, we're trying harder than ever. In an independent laboratory test of gasolines on BMW intake valves, high-octane Boron Super became the first in the U.S. to pass BMW's official test for lifetime intake valve cleanliness. By keeping valves and intake systems clean and free of deposits other gasolines leave behind, Boron is proud to provide this performance and power for BMW. Also, for people like Leonard and Gloria Keeler, who need all the power they can get. told you at the top of the newscast, Hurricane Gilbert's winds have dropped to about 125 miles an hour. That's down from about 170 yesterday. What's it like to face wind like that? Reporter Beth Dolinar sat in a wind tunnel at Duquesne University to try to find out today. They turned the wind up to only 45 miles an hour, and she said it felt like a wall of water coming at her. She couldn't even open her eyes. Experts at Duquesne say wind at 170 miles an hour would blow down walls like they were made of paper. If you just tuned in, you may be wondering why Joe and I are dressed this way, and the answer is very simple. We pick up extra money waiting on tape. Well, what about me? That's, that's oh, you, you look okay. Oh, you look oh. beautiful. <laughs> but here we are, you know, like waiters. I took three uh, orders, well, on my way into the... One uh, for me. News, right. Easy on the sauce. Great. Right. <laughs> Lightly, if you don't mind. Well, the good weather in the Pittsburgh area continues while they're getting catastrophic damage down south. But in our area today... Kind of chilly. Our low this morning, International Airport, 46 degrees. High this afternoon reached 73. Normals this time of year, lows of 54, highs of 76. That put Pittsburgh five and one half degrees below the normal. Currently, International Airport, sky conditions, scattered clouds based at 4,500 feet, visibility 15 miles. Temperature 61 degrees, humidity 75%. Surface wind west-northwest, 7 miles per hour, barometer 30.14 inches of mercury. That's rising. Satellite photograph, beautiful weather in the eastern half of the country. The hurricane starting to give it just in the southern gulf. The rest of the precipitation's over in through the Rockies. Summary of National Weather Service radar sites across the country. Uh, shows the precipitation. If we can go to the summary, all right. Over here and through the Carolinas, down into Florida, and then up here and through the central plains and west, generally about a half to three quarters of an inch precipitation. Let's take a look at Gilbert. Early this morning, Gilbert was located in the south, continued to move right on up to the northwest, now is located off of the peninsula of the, the Yucatan, and in the process of coming up, it's weakened, strengthened, uh, weakened down to 125 miles per hour. Uh, at the same time, the uh, the storm center continues to move northwest at uh, west northwest at 15 miles per hour and along with that at the present rate it'll intensify once it gets into the gulf again but not up to 175 like it was at the yucatan peninsula and then once it gets uh, moving it'll gradually veer to the northwest or north northwest so anywhere from new orleans west of brownsville could have a problem with landfall friday afternoon early evening let's take a look at skywatch 4 national weather service radar at greater pit on on a 120 mile uh, range, we have no activity showing up right now. And that activity uh, to the east of us that's showing up is strictly uh, Chestnut Ridge and Laurel Ridge. On a satellite photograph, we can have a continuation of clouds gradually moving south and east through the Pittsburgh district. And mainly, though, the cloud cover is located up north in through the northern sections on the surface map. High pressure is located over northwestern sections of the Great Lakes. This is moving south and east. It's going to give us three great days of weather. Meanwhile, precipitation in through Florida, and tomorrow night we'll start to get the activity coming back up uh, from the Gulf. The flow pattern at 18,000 feet out of the west-northwest, so the low and the hurricane gradually moving north, high pressure gradually moving east. A forecast overnight, fair skies, cool temperatures, some patchy fog in the low-lying areas, a low of 45 degrees. Thursday during the day, frontal system continues to drop on south, high pressure moves into our area, and now we can see the Hurricane Gilbert moving moving northwest, but in our area, just a continuation of great weather. This could influence our weather come Sunday and Monday. Forecast for Thursday. 
Look for mostly sunny conditions, pleasant temperatures, high of 70 degrees. Thursday night, fair and cool. Overnight low will be dropping off to 44 degrees. And on Friday, another good day. The high pressure center will be right over the district. But by Friday, that precipitation should be up to about Memphis, Tennessee, and just starting to head north slowly. Friday's landfall for the Texas area, and that will influence our weather Sunday and Monday. The outlook for Friday, another nice day. Mostly sunny, pleasant, high 73 degrees. On the extended Saturday, we'll start out with some sun in the morning, then increasing cloudiness during the day. It's going to be on the mild side, 75 degrees. Sunday and Monday, look for cloudy conditions throughout the area with rain showers from the hurricane. If it moves like we think it will, 75 degrees. So both days. We could get some much needed rain out of this, but as big as this storm is, it'll go wherever it wants. Not bad temperatures, though. No. Okay, okay thanks, Joe. The Steelers are getting ready for the NFL's top-rated quarterback. That story next in sports. And Bobby Bonilla keeps the Pirates in second place. Stan has details next. It's that time of year again. Fall's here and kids are back in school. Most students will be equipped with the usual school supplies like notepads, textbooks, and pencils. But unfortunately, some students have other kinds of supplies in mind, too. Secrets. Are your children keeping any from you? Friday at 8.30, see the true story of one mother's struggle with her young son's drug addiction. Then at 9, Ann Devlin takes a close look at teenage drug abuse in Pittsburgh, only on WTAE-TV. In designing the Volkswagen Fox, we could have done what some did. Cut the standard features and offered less car for less money. We could have engineered a small car that looked good, but offered nothing in the way of pure driving excitement. We could have, but we didn't. We'd never pull a stunt like that. That isn't the Volkswagen way. Today's high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. They're searing heat and begin to break down an oil immediately. That's why there's Castro. The motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castro before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castro, engineered for today's smaller cars. Castro GTX, available at Three Rivers BMW on Route 19 South Hills. It's our birthday today. Happy birthday, kid. Everyone is falling in love with Dominic and Eugene. A heartfelt, superbly acted film. Relationships that ring pure and fine as crystal. Tom Hulse is electrified. <laughs> you go to school, I work. I make money because I'm a money maker. An astonishing movie. Dominic and Eugene, rated PG-13. Starts Friday at a theater near you. There is good news for Montreal tonight. Stan. Because I feel like Burt Parks, you know, <laughs> sitting, there he sitting is. here. And they're smiling up in Montreal ah, with those wall-to-wall -wall teeth that Burt had, Bert had, too. The theme tonight on Channel 4, of course, was through the years. For Bobby Vanilla, you might change that to through the month. Vanilla, who's been, whose slump has been legend, had not hit a home run in one month exactly to the day. That homer slump ended tonight, and it led to a Pirate win and a four-and-a-half game lead over third-place Montreal. Bucks win it in 12 in Montreal, 4-1. to one. Here is the long and short of it. That's Randy Johnson, who plays for Montreal. He's 6'10", 5'5", John Cangelosi, David and Goliath. Dave Martinez in the bottom half of the first inning, a triple down the right field line. And he ends up scoring on a ground out by Andres Galarraga. And Montreal, a 1-0 lead against the Pirates. But the Bucks tie it in the second. Barry Bonds, an RBI single. Glenn Wilson scores at one apiece. Mike Dunn pitching a strong ball game for the Pirates tonight. Ball game stayed 1-1 thanks to some good defense. Watch Martinez, who had hit that triple, rob Bobby Bonilla of at least a double. Great catch, but Bonilla gets the last lap. Two on in the 12th, three run homer, his first home run since August the 14th. Pirates win 4-1. But the Mets reduced their magic number to nine by beating Chicago 3-1. The Phillies, oh, there it is, I'm sorry, Mookie Wilson. A triple down the right field line. He has had a great September. Sid Fernandez and the Mets beat the Cubs and Calvin Schiraldi 3-1 to one, the final. The Mets' magic number now 9. Philadelphia beat the Cardinals 9-2. to two. Nolan Ryan struck out 13. Astros beat Danny Jackson and the Reds 7-1. to one. Braves and Dodgers scoreless in the third. Giants lead San Diego 3-0 in the fourth. There is something to be said for controlling your own destiny. No matter what the Yankees or the Tigers or the Brewers do, 
If the Boston Red Sox keep winning, they win the American League East, and they won again tonight, beating Baltimore 4-3. Mike Greenwell hit for the cycle. Meanwhile, in Cleveland, the Yankees beat the Indians 7-5. Dave Winfield, who has tortured the tribe all season long, hits a three-run homer off Rich Yet, top of the first two on. It's a 3 to nothing Yankee lead. Now, the tribe gets one back. Jay Bell, the Indian shortstop, hits a deep shot. Watch Claudell Washington. Little help is never shunned. Look at Claudell. Flop and it drops over the fence for a home run, but the Yankees win anyway. Detroit has lost 19 of the last 23. Toronto beats them 3-2. Tigers five and a half out. Milwaukee leads the White Sox 4-2 in the eighth. The Steeler pass defense, which has had more leaks than cheap plumbing, got some more bad news today. Free safety Thomas Everett is doubtful for Sunday's game with Cincinnati after being injured against the Redskins. Lupe Sanchez, who played very well against Washington, will get the start if Everett is unable to answer the call. Dwayne Woodruff, who has yet to play this season, is also expected to play. And they'll need all the help they can get because the Steelers will be facing the top-rated quarterback in the NFL. Boomer Esiason has completed 64% of his passes, good for a whopping 634 yards and seven touchdowns with only two interceptions. In fact, every touchdown the Bengals have scored this year has come on a pass. The Penguins' first week of training camp is about to end, and the Pens will play their first exhibition games this weekend, Saturday in Denver against the New York Rangers, and Sunday in Utica, New York, against New Jersey. First-year head coach Gene Ubriaco knows that he has several talented individuals on the club, Mario, Paul Coffey, Zarley Zalapsky and company, but the idea now is to hold these or mold these individuals into a team, one that transforms individual excellence into team excellence. The team, uh, the team aspect, I think uh, that's so important. I mean, we have great individual players. If we could mold that they, they care and work uh, for each other, and when one person gets hurt, they all feel it, that's the kind of guys I want. I want guys that are thinking those kind of lines. <laughs> what? I love some residue. Pierre LaRouche, 32 years old, retired from hockey, the one-time Penguin. Great right player. Yes, he was. Right, and we'll be right back. <laughs> should have bought a Honda. Honda is the best-selling import in western Pennsylvania. Reliability is one reason why. I should have bought a Honda. There's lots of talk about heat pumps. In fact, 94% of local electric heat pump owners are happy with its cooling ability. 94%. They also say they're satisfied with the heat pump's ability to heat. And almost everyone surveyed said they'd buy another electric heat pump. It's time you found out what heat pump owners already know, that quality always makes sense. Call Duquesne Light for details. Just because something's marked clearance doesn't mean it's right for you. None of these shoes match. But at your Dodge dealer's big factory authorized clearance, you'll find sports cars to ram tough pickups. Right now, save up to $16.50 on full-size Dodge pickups in stock when you combine cash back with Prospector package savings. Or save up to $22.50 on select mid-size Dakota pickups in stock. Or get $300 back on Dakota S models. Get what's right for you. See Sirocco Dodge in Coriopolis in Ross Park Dodge North Hills. Why waste time at other optical stores? LensCrafters can craft your top quality glasses in about an hour, because we put our lab right in the store. The fact that I could get the lenses in an hour was, was terrific. One hour and coming out feeling happy. LensCrafters took 42 minutes to do my glasses. LensCrafters, we spend our time saving your time. LensCrafters, custom crafted eyeglasses in about an hour. Ross Park Mall, Monroeville Mall Annex, and now in South Hills Village. Call 1-800-522-LENS for one near you. We hope that earlier this evening you were able to share some memories with us. WTAE-TV celebrated our 30th anniversary today. And members of our Channel 4 family, both past and present, got together for an old-fashioned reunion in Studio A that was broadcast live tonight. We shared some good times, some great stories, and some film clips that jogged some memories of long-forgotten events. And we hope to see all of you 30 years from now. Oh, like that's the sound of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. I'll try to be there. <laughs> that's the late edition of Action News. Cheers is next, then Nightline. Good night.
Discover the Atlantic difference. Home equity credit lines with a low 10.5% rate. Get the Atlantic difference. A 10.5% rate guaranteed for one year. So no matter what happens, your rate won't increase. Atlantic Financial. Happy birthday, Channel 4. Sure, sure.